Alrighty guys, real quick, you guys, I'm tracking down, I'm trying to track down a misfire. Customer states while driving the 30, 40 miles per hour starts shuddering. I'm thinking it's a misfire, guys. There's no check engine light. Now, even if I power break it, yeah, see it show up right there on cylinder three. All right, so this is very intermittent. It's not all the time. No check engine light on, no nothing. But just sitting here and idle, this car, these cars won't bog down like they used to back in the past. Some kind of, uh, something would kick in and stop the RPM from going up if the brake is applied. But yeah, see every now and then, uh, cylinder three will show a counter. That lets me know right there, that's my intermittent misfire. Let me put it back in park. Yeah, see it's right there, I caught it. So it's all about catching it, guys. Now I gotta go under the hood and look at cylinder three. All right, y'all stay tuned. Ooh, righty, guys. Let's do a long video. This is one of those problem, intermittent problem, guys. Uh, customer states the car will shudder 30, 40 miles an hour. I get in the car, start it up, let it idle. Every 20 seconds, I feel up. Mm. All right, my bell ring. Ding, 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 ding. But before I jump to conclusion, I hook up my scan too. There's no fault code. There's no checking the light. In other words, this is so intermittent, the computer is unable to pick it up. Okay, yeah, the computer, it's too, it's so fast and intermittent. The computer have no time to pick it up and flag it as a trouble, as, as a problem. But that's where you come in at as the mechanic or a technician. I like the term technician better. Okay. Well, anyway, um, you're gonna need a piece of advice, a piece of device, a piece of machinery called a scan tool. You you need to look at data. Now, as a screen, this is a newer model. Some of you guys that's you know old school that didn't have this technology, we are now able to see. It's a four cylinder, right? We are now able to see all four cylinders from a secondary ignition standpoint on a screen that would tell us if a problem is detected pretty fast too this data is pretty fast as you saw on that shorts when cylinder when that cylinder three hit i can feel it right it's a vibration it's a small little boom boom every time i felt that i look at the screen i can see a number counter on that cylinder three guys that's a true indication right there that there's a problem going on in cylinder three and chances are it's a it's a secondary problem secondary ignition meaning plug wires or spark plugs a thing like that now intermittent problems are always hard to track down right it, because they're not constant this this is what separates mechanics from technicians okay a lot of mechanics or a lot of generalized car guys they don't see a fault code they don't see no problem no guys the computer is good this is a computer by the way the pcm it's good it's more sophisticated it's fast but it's not the end all it cannot just it just will not pick up everything and in fact the computer even though it's very much improved over the years it's still unable to detect some things that's why mechanics exist okay follow me now a lot of people oh just get on google and find out what the code is and you can fix your own car no man it's not that cut and dry okay if that was the case there wouldn't be no professional mechanics out there all right we're still in demand guys to all you mechanics out there to anybody that's thinking about getting in the field yeah we're still in demand all right somebody's out there looking for us if we're good that's the thing you got to be you know pretty good okay computer does not know if, for instance, let me give you some example. This thing, even though it's smart, badass, right? It cannot tell you if fuel pressure is low. Know why? Because it does not directly monitor fuel pressure. All right? That's not a sensor. What's the fuel line? Let's pretend it's the fuel line coming from the fuel pump. Let's just pretend it's the intake. There's not a sensor on this line that would tell, report back to the computer the pressure in this line okay yeah that would be a great idea right the computer can tell if i got low fuel pressure that way i would get a phone code that way i can fix my own car yeah that would be great right but no it, it, the reason that's not implemented it is now on the newer stuff but before it, it was a risk factor you can't just tie in sensors and gadgets and gadgets inside a sensitive fuel pressure line like that yeah, imagine that sensor give out and start leaking and the car blow up. Car makers would be in major trouble. 
So for the longest, that technology was not available. So car makers had to come up with a more sophisticated way to alert the mechanics that there's a potential chance that there's low fuel pressure. All right, it would try to do some adaptation. Okay, it would try to lean out things, blah blah. This you may get a P0171 or something like that fuel system lean. You know, it has other ways to tell you to look at the fuel pressure. Stupid. If the O2 sensor is not seeing enough oxygen or seeing too much oxygen, and not enough fuel, or fuel will give off other, or the proper fuel pressure will give off other readings that low fuel pressure won't okay so if the computer sees that discrepancy yeah you as the mechanic has to put two and two together oh man that's pointing straight toward fuel pressure man so now at that point you hook up your fuel pressure gauge and verify pre fuel pressure that way you maybe you can come to a conclusion that yeah your fuel pump is giving out it's failing pressure is not up to par so let me take a break real quick when i come back we're gonna talk some more man y'all stay tuned Ooh, righty guys, we back. No sense talking on this whole video. Let's do this. Here's what I'm gonna do, guys. First, I'm gonna put my gloves on, guys. We're about to go into the operating room, okay? <laughs> yeah. All right, here's the thinking behind what I'm about to do. I'm about to swap over cylinder three. Everything that's in cylinder three, meaning secondary ignition, uh, the coil, as well as the spark plug. I'm about to move them to number one. All right, yeah, I'm gonna jump over a cylinder. No sense putting them side by side because they could have, man, this is an inline. It's an inline engine, okay? So I'm gonna jump over. Uh, I'm going to cylinder one. I'm gonna put everything in cylinder three into cylinder one and everything in cylinder one over into cylinder three. Now, I'm gonna go back and view my data, all right? My secondary ignition screen that shows which cylinder is misfiring. Yes, the computer has that capability now. We didn't always have that, guys. So you new guys that are working on cars now, <laughs> uh, be thankful all right there's some new technology out there was not available back in my day when i started all right yeah y'all lucky all right so yeah let me get all of this done now we're going to go back inside the car and look at that screen and see if i get that bounce or that bump in cylinder one if i do it's simple <laughs> it's obvious uh my problem is secondary ignition at that point i'm going to end up recommending uh a major tune-up spark plugs uh now, we'll talk some more about the course, you know, how you should handle that because it's all a case-by-case -case, uh, situation as far as replacing all the cores. But we'll talk. Let's, let's, let's look at the screen. Let's get Alrighty, it. Alrighty, guys. I'm back under the same screen, okay? Remember what we're looking for. Uh-oh. I felt the bump. There you go. There you go. Y'all feel it? I, ain't even, I don't even have the car bogged down, guys. Y'all see cylinder one counting? So everything I moved out of cylinder three is over in cylinder one. You know what that tells me, guys? that the misfire problem followed the cylinder that I put it into. So it's fairly simple at this point, guys. We have a secondary ignition problem. Look at that. Can, Y'all can't feel it, but I feel the misfire. It's over in cylinder one now because I moved the problem child over to that cylinder. Look, I don't even have it bogged down. I'm not even in gear, guys. I'm just sitting here idling. So moral of the story, guys, if you get a complaint where customer states is shutter or shaking and vibration especially on the low try to talk to the customer and get some things out of them as far as well man when does it happen does it is it real bad like going up a hill because if they say that one could argue uh, that yeah is if it's if it's problem is happening going up the hill that's under a low secondary ignition is very much affected under a low in fact it's put under a lot of pressure under a low all right, so this thing is counting even more. So since I moved it to number one, it's it's even more affected. Since I moved the problem parts, and y'all saw those spark plugs, right? So they did not look the best. All right, this car have uh, eighty thousand miles, eighty five thousand miles. Okay, yeah, guys, spark plugs. I mean, there's a range of reason why spark plug will go out on your car. So I don't know. Is the tune up due now? I mean, I think the tune up or spark plugs. I gotta check the book. Uh, it's recommended at 60k anyway so what yeah this car has come on camera this car has 85 20 so technically it's time for a tune-up and remember guys i'm saying core because that's also matched with the plug might not be the core it could very well be only the spark plugs which should have been replaced anyway all right all these car makers that scream out spark plugs can last 100,000 miles 
Uh, I don't agree with that. I do from a certain standpoint, but your car got to be in top-notch running optimal, all right, to pull that off, okay? I personally would not wait that long, 100,000 miles, to replace my spark plugs, no matter what the car manufacturer suggests, all right? Number one, spark plugs are not that expensive, and on some cars, they're fairly easy, so I just soon do it at 60,000 miles. Had this car had a tune-up at 60,000 miles, we likely wouldn't be here today. Because, it's like I say, it might not be the core. That's just something mechanics tend to do because they're so married. They're so in touch with each other. They'd rather do them in pairs. But I found my problem, guys. Again, here's the complaint. Customers state there's a shutter while driving 40 miles an hour up a hill. There's no check engine light. There's no codes, okay? Absolutely no codes. Remember I talked about early how sophisticated the computer is yes it is but however it did not pick this up okay this is so intermittent that it won't pick it up computer i have a hard time picking up an intermittent problem guys yeah that thing counting big time so i found the problem guys that's all i had let me wrap this up any question now i can get more in depth in a diagnosis it's just uh, on a car by car basis all right this the car this is the problem that this car had that does not mean every car you bring in with this complaint that's going to be your problem that's why you have to properly diagnose. Guys, let's talk about that $200 diagnostic charge most shops do, including us. This is where the $200 come in at. All right? Now, let me do this. It doesn't matter if I found out the spark plug was bad in five minutes. <laughs> All right? It's not a time slot. That you cannot penalize mechanics for being faster or quicker than the average. All right? You guys... Well, it only took you five minutes to find out the spark plug was bad. You should only get $20. No, it don't work like that. This is a diagnostic charge. What I did was just diagnose this customer complaint. Her complaint was misfire, not misfire, shutter while driving. I diagnosed her problem. Y'all done got me riled up now because you guys are still fussing about the fact that shops can charge $200 for diagnostic charge. That is a flat fee. Again, doesn't matter if it take me one minute or five hours. The agreed upon amount between the establishment and the customers was $200. That is one hour labor. All right? A lot of shops charge $200 per hour labor. We are allocated one hour to find your problem. But again, let me say this again because I, I, mechanics have a hard time. I cannot believe mechanics have a hard time understanding this. It does not matter if it take me one minute or one or 10 10 hours i mean of course i would have to go get more authorization from the customer to proceed but you guys think because somebody figures something out quick that's all you're not paying for the time that they spend on your car you're paying for their knowledge and outcome <laughs> okay what's the point oh my goodness I, I need a whole nother video to touch on that but yeah this is what two hundred dollars to get you in a diagnostic form okay remember let's let's talk about diagnostic first all right let's talk let me bring up a scenario my check engine light i'm a, I'm a female i'm going to the shop uh, excuse me sir ma'am how you doing what's your problem hey how you doing my check engine light on I'm a, i need to get that checked out here's the service advice well ma'am you know, as long as you understand we have a 200 dollars diagnostic charge that goes toward the repair if you decide to get a repair okay it's not two hundred dollars plus the repair the diagnostic charge goes into the repair that's more of an incentive to go ahead and get you to let the person that diagnosed it fix it it's nothing like paying for a diagnosis and then you run to cousin pookie and get it fixed although in this case that might not be a bad idea i mean it's simple we i just i just got you two hundred dollars worth of information on your car that's not that doesn't require a super tech to make the repair okay is what i'm saying so you got to finagle numbers around to your being, but do not criticize the fact that somebody charged two hundred dollars. Oh my goodness, man! Again, I can go on and on and on about this, but I won't on this video because I want this video to be short. I found the problem. How much time did it take me? It don't matter. Let me put it like that. I'm I'm actually filming a video, so I took way more time than you know. what I'm saying I can do this. I I can do that. I right? doesn't matter where I'm at. I work out at four shop. It does not matter where I'm at. My same thinking applies wherever I'm at. I right? I have a certain length of time to find out 
And more customers are more concerned with your outcome than your speed. Sure, if we figure something out in five minutes, we ain't going to go running up there in five minutes to tell the customer, man, we found your problem. Wow, that was quick. No, that's just common sense. That's not business thinking. You don't do that. So if I figure something out in two minutes, yeah, we I look around, look the car over. Like now, I'm about to let the car in the air and look it over, see if there's anything else you need. At 85,000 miles, guys, that's a chance you may need brakes. Let me check the coolant. Let me check this. Let me check that. Yeah, so... <laughs> Oh, my goodness, man. You guys don't know how shops work. All you guys that's complaining. And again, these, some of the guys complaining are shop owners. Like, dude, are you really crazy? Are you really that? Ooh. All right. That's not what this video about. So I'm done with this video. All right. Y'all be sure and catch the live stream.